Hello. Today's topic is lashing ergonomics. This is so, so important, so crucial. Lashing ergonomics is something that I'm very passionate about because this is what's gonna really up your game in terms of being able to do those multi-hour lashing appointments. If you get into the space of volume lashing and Russian volume lashing and you are dedicated to making your own fans, this is so important. Even if you're not going into that, just as a beginner, you're gonna be spending three hours on all of your clients minimum. Lashing ergonomics is something that's relevant to the most beginner lash artist who needs to spend three hours per set to get any progress with their beginner lash model. And it's also relevant to people who are learning Russian volume lashes and making their own fans because it's a multi-hour process. Lashing ergonomics, being able to be comfortable in your lashing position for several hours is so key and vital to your success. Not just that, if you want to have a day where you can take back-to-back -back clients for eight to 10 hours, this is important. Pay attention. I remember when I was lashing full time from home, I was doing eight to 10 hours back to back clients seven days a week, 55 hours a week. I know a thing or two about lashing ergonomics. I promise you that it doesn't take long for you to realize that posture and positioning is everything when it comes to being able to sustain good ergonomics and comfortable position without cramps, without muscle tensions down the road and having to go for regular massages just to be able to keep up with your work. So pay attention. First of all, you want to get as close as possible to your bed. Now, personally, I like to sit with my back close to the backrest of the stool and have my legs open so that I can come as close as possible to the bed. I'll scoot myself as close as possible to the bed so that my stool chair is literally kind of tucking inside of that massage bed. When I'm sitting up, be as close as possible to the head of the bed and to the head of the client. The other thing is your lashing pillow. You might notice that our lashing foam pillows are actually quite narrow. That is because I personally customize every single pillow that I use. I discovered this trick a while ago, and these pillows are, you can buy them anywhere, eBay, Amazon, online, a lot of lash shops sell them as well. They come almost twice as long, and a client's head and neck length is never that long. The issue that I was having was people would, would be lying down as close as possible to me, but the pillow would be stopping them at their shoulders from coming up even further. I would have to bend my back and hunch in order to see the lashes that I needed to see. And so obviously that caused a lot of strain on your back. And we don't want that. What I did was I actually took out the foam stuffing out of the pillow and I started cutting. And this foam is high density foam, so it's actually really hard to cut. How did you cut it? I actually used a bread knife. It kind of looks like it has a lot of jagged edges. It's, you have to saw it back and forth. It helps when you have some holding one side and you holding the other side. But if you don't have someone like how I didn't, then I just put it between my legs and kind of started sawing away at it. In no means am I recommending for you to do this at home without help if you don't know. It could be very dangerous, so just make sure you're careful when you're doing this. And that's how I was able to cut the width of the pillow. And also, if the height of your pillow is too high, then I would also do that this way. So sawing the pillow this way. And then that's how I came up with this very custom size and shape of this pillow. That combined with your seating position, coming in as close as possible to the bed will get you as close as possible to the client's head. Another thing is the height at which you're sitting. You should have a stool where you can adjust the height of it and you should have a massage bed where you can also adjust the height of it. First, I'll talk about the stool. The height that you want to be at is your tweezers and your client's lashes at your breast level. Right now, I'm actually a little bit too short. With the client's head positioned here, I would want the top of their lashes to be exactly kind of at the top of my breast so that when I'm positioning my hands and tweezers on top of the client's head and I rest my palms on the client's head, so this is a way, a point of stability. And I'll teach you that later on when we talk about lashing position. But I rest my hands on top of the client's forehead and the position, it should be right on top of your chest. You wanna adjust your height of the seat in order for that position to happen. So for a client's head that is a little bit lower, then this position would be fine. 
but generally speaking, there's like an average size. I probably would have to go up a, like an inch. So this would be most comfortable for me. You want to make sure that your shoulders are relaxed and not tensing up. So this is what you're going to be doing unconsciously. If your client's head level is too high and you're trying to come up above what your position to do. If your client's head is too high, you're going to go like this. Let's say you put your bed way too high. I'm going to show you how you can adjust the height of your bed. All massage beds will have these legs. Some massage beds are not adjustable, but you want to get a massage bed that's adjustable. I highly recommend getting an aluminum body frame because there's so much more lightweight than a wooden one. If you're a mobile lash artist or just for ease of moving your bed around for whatever reason in the future. It's only maybe $20, $30 more expensive, but such a good investment when you're deciding what kind of bed to get. When you look at the leg of your massage table, you're gonna see different holes and then a little knob as to where the height is currently. All of these represent different levels of height that you could potentially get. So you wanna make sure first of all, that the height is the same all four corners around. And how you would adjust this this is my kind of trick on how to do it because I'm not a very strong person and this kind of sometimes it hurts my fingers if you don't do it right or if you try multiple times. So you have to press this knob as hard as you can and then make sure it goes inside and then at the same time, you have to move the leg down or up to change the position. I also anchor my shoulder right here so that I'm lifting the bed off the floor while this is happening so that I could easily move the pole with my hand. I'll go in there, lift the bed, push the knob. I'm kind of twisting it. Twisted it so it's kind of like it's in there and I'm pulling it down and I've got to twist it back to get it back into place. So there it is. It's gonna lock back into position like that. This is actually really difficult to push, so sometimes my thumb hurts. So I do this again, push it all the way in, twist it, there we go, and then bring it back up. It's gonna come out there. Okay, y'all, that is how you adjust the height. Do that all four corners. Don't tie yourself out, but that's it. So you wanna make sure that the bed is calibrated to your height before you start lashing, or else you're gonna get some back pains. So you're gonna be tensing up and kind of like, maybe you'll even tilt your head back a little bit because it's not in the right position. In contrast, if the reverse was true, if let's say the bed was too low or your stool was too high and the client's head is too low. Now I can't even put my stool underneath the, tuck it under the bed like how I like to, to get as close as possible. So this definitely not work for me. Then what you're gonna do unconsciously is start bending and you don't want to be bending so that you can see better you want to be at rest at your current height level without your shoulders hunching or tensing upwards and scrunching like this relaxed good posture and positioning you want to be able to work at a level where you can see everything and you're not having to hunch and go in like this now when you first start out lashing you're gonna be hunching just because you're training your eyes to see such fine hairs so what i recommend for when you're just starting out and you're doing that because you're just a beginner is magnifying glasses with magnifying glasses that should help you to be able to maintain a good posture and not hunch hunching is probably the first culprit to you getting tired and burnt out and your muscles just failing and you being like that's it call it a day so you just want to make sure that your body is really comfortable and listen to your body if you find that your body's feel, starting to feel sore whether it's your neck your your shoulders your back so as we know upper back lower back it's all connected through your spine so the muscles whether it's upper or lower are gonna affect each other whatever you do up here and down here it's all related and also up here your position is so important so that you can really make sure your game is on point you're comfortable and that you're developing good habits for the future. Now, even if you're an advanced lash artist, we know that we always get into these really bad habits of bad posturing, positioning. So now is really the time for you to start thinking and trying out new positions. I know that a lot of the time, people have positions that kind of maximize and optimize their lashing speed. You don't want to do it maybe when you have a back-to-back -back day of clients, but maybe when you have a client and then the break afterwards, or like a day where you don't have so many clients, you can try to adjust your positioning 
for the sake of having a more ergonomic friendly position to save your neck and your back, try it when you have more downtime, when you have a client that you don't have to rush to finish for the next client and see if you can start kind of training your body to remember. Because as we all know, body mechanics is all about muscle memory, just like how you train your hands to use your tweezers. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful for you to know a little bit more about lashing ergonomics, the way that you position yourself on your stool, the right height for you to lash at, with your client and also how you would position yourself as close as possible to the bed. Stay tuned until the next video.